Hello everyone, welcome back. So we're finally to the group problem. So grab a buddy or do it alone um, and see if you can do this one. So what is the problem actually asking us? Well, we have a 300 Newton force that's acting on this bracket. Um, as you can see, it's a very three-dimensional bracket. It's a very strained bracket. Why is it shaped this way? Who knows? And we want to figure out the magnitude of the projected component of this force acting along this line right here. Okay. You're like, this isn't too bad. I can do this in my sleep. Hopefully. I mean, if you're already dreaming of statics, I feel like you're in a good place. <laughs> I, I do dream of teaching sometimes. I also dream that I'm missing a class or I've failed a test. Like, those dreams never go away. Okay, so how are you going to do this? Well, first you're going to find the position vector from the origin to the point of interest. Then we're going to find the unit vector of that line. So we can figure out what line we're projecting along, because we're not just projecting along the vector, we're projecting along the entire line. You're going to find the angle between those two, and then you can find the projection just by taking the dot product. So, not too difficult. You're like, what's the catch? There's a catch. There's a little bit of a catch this time. And you're going to figure it out fairly quickly. So, I'm not going to tell you what the catch is. You're going to have to find out for yourself. So I'm going to count to three. You're going to pause. You're going to go try it yourself. And you're going to come back. Okay. So one, two, three. Okay. You're back. Hopefully you've taken about five to ten minutes. Probably about 15 for this one if you want to finish it. Um, and you come back to finish the rest of the video to check yourself. Or you can just look at the PowerPoint. I mean, that's honestly fine too. So let's walk through the steps. So why... What's the catch here? What makes it more difficult? Well, that position vector isn't actually quite as easy to get. Now, you're like, well, it's just like you said it right there. Yes, it is, but this is really kind of simplifying it a lot. First off, do you see a negative 4.5 anywhere? You don't. Honestly, there's no negative 4.5. Do you see a 0.3? That one you see. Do you see a 0.26? Okay. My voice is going to be crazy there. Okay. So where are all these numbers coming from? Why is it seeming a little bit strange here? Well, first off, we have to think about this one. You see that we go 300 in the y direction. That's easy. But then we go 300 in the x direction. And then it's at an angle right here to get the rest of it. So we have to add on the angle. So it's kind of like this. We go here and then right here. We're just looking at it from this side. This would be a 30 degree. Wait, make sure I actually do all the angles right. This would be a 60 degree angle. This is 30. And this right here is 300. And of course I drew it too high, so I'll bring it down a little bit. Um, there we go. So we have 300 here. We have 300 here. We want to find out the total x distance. We need to figure out what this x position is right here, and we definitely need to figure out what the um, z position is right here. So similar triangles, that's 30 degrees, that's 60, that's 90, and then we can solve. So the x position would be 300 plus 300 cosine of 60, which comes out to be 450. And the z position would be 300 sine of 60, which comes out to be that. Okay, be very careful of your signs. You notice that the x is negative because it's going in the negative x direction. Um, but once we figure all that, it's not too bad. We can then take the magnitude fairly easy, just using Pythagorean theorem. And once we found the magnitude, we can then find the unit vector by taking our position vector, which we just calculated, and dividing the um, dividing it by the magnitude. And here we go. Notice that this unit vector is unitless. Unit vector, unitless. Um, it doesn't have any units. That's why we can use it for the force vector later if we want to. Okay, now we want to figure out, well, what's the force components? First off, we got to figure out what f prime is because it's the same kind of thing. We're going to take a three-dimensional vector and break it down into two simpler 2D problems. So for this one right here, we have the force vector. We have some parallel component. To the line we care about and then we have our um, y component right here so this would be fy i believe yes it's fy and this one right here is f prime also second thing to remember is that 
when you're doing these kind of problems, you're not always solving for z first and then x and y second. It might be that you're solving for y first or x first. You don't really know. Um, this is 300 newtons. And this angle right here is 60, just because you know a right angle is 90 degrees, and there's 30 degrees right there. So 90 minus 30 is 60. And then 300 cosine of 60 is f prime. Did I do my angles wrong? Or did they do my angles wrong? Oh, this might be wrong. Or I've messed up somewhere in my little guys. Oh, no. Sorry, 300 cosine of 60 or 300 sine of 30. I was just looking at it from the opposite way. I did this triangle, which I'm having trouble drawing in, and they did the other triangle. Both work, both are fine, sorry. Trig, who knows how to do it? And if we want to solve for the Fy component, we just do either 300 cosine, or sorry, sine of 60 or 300 cosine of 30, depending on which side you chose to work on. So just as so we're completely clear about that, um, this right here is F, and I could have done either one of these triangles, where this is Fy, this is F prime, this is 60, this is 30. So if I choose this triangle, then it's F sine of 30 to get F prime. If I choose this triangle right here, then it's F cosine of 60. So you get the same exact answer because of trick. Okay. Anyway. So we have all three components because we're just going to break it up into another two dimensional problem to solve for the rest of the components. Um, and once we've done that, we get our force vector. And then we take the magnitude of that force vector, which of course should be 300 because that's 300. And having solved for that, we can then finish our problem. So if we want to find the component that is along our, our line of interest, we take the dot product between the unit, or ah, this gets trying to solve for the angle first. So if we want to find the angle, we take the dot product between the position vector and our force vector first, and then we plug it into our angle equation right here. This gives the angle between those two lines, which is 36.1 degrees. And if we want the magnitude of the projected component, we take the dot product of the force vector and the unit vector of the line we care about. And that comes by 242 newtons. Okay, I believe that's everything. That is. So we'll stop there. Um, I hope this helps you. Just remember that dot product is super helpful. Make sure you've completely mastered it. I think one more example or so that you can look at if you want. Um, if you need more examples of this, please email me. Let me know. Um, if this wasn't clear enough, also let me know and I can go back and edit it. Um, I want to benefit you as much as possible, so let me know how I can do that. Well, I hope this helps you. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.